following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome. All. Well, now, got some kind of echo. Okay. Is that? Yeah, it sounds. Okay. Uh, those echoes there for a moment. And of course, uh, it's because uh, hearing voices doesn't mean that they're not real. Uh, welcome to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. And as always, it doesn't matter where you're at, as long as you're here at the point of time. Following take between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So what do we have going on today? Up 64 points on the S cash. And uh, the real question is, do we have any kind of follow through with the way of volumes today? Uh, volumes okay? Is it? Fantastic. Now we got about 7.4 billion shares, so it's okay. Um, big question is the uh, fund buying in today, are we going to see a bit of a pullback? Um, and I had a lot of people, uh, as we talked yesterday, Monday, uh, that uh, seen a, a great deal of shorting and it kind of snuck up on me. I didn't really see it in the daily. Uh, and uh, Pretty decent short squeeze going on uh, for a lot of folks. Uh, yesterday, I think a lot of people looked at the candle and decided it's time to pull the trigger to go short, and uh, they're getting squeezed out today. But uh, not uncommon to see the most amount of money put in by IRAs at the highest prices. So tomorrow for lower, probably a pretty good indication that if you're up a percent and a half for fund buying, got to figure you're going to come back uh, half, maybe three quarters when it's over. Uh, so uh, you can call 877-927-6648. You can email me at pathdfn.com. And of course, you can always post a message in the den. Uh, so what else do we have? Okay. Uh, yeah. So, let's see what we have. Um, anyway, fun buying pretty much over at the end of the day. Uh, yeah. Yeah. My guess, uh, I'm on the audio, something didn't set on the office as I have anything or machine on slash show. So maybe guys in the in the uh, the uh, control room can start looking around for possible reasons that happened. Uh, I don't think so, but uh, we'll check here and see if there's anything that could be a problem on my end. Let's see what you have here. Nope, settings look good. Uh, Yeah, see, better. We'll turn the mic back. And I hear any echo now. That's a little thing. Okay, so what are we going to be uh, doing today? Well, like I said, volume's pretty good. Last day of fun buying. Normally, you're going to get at least a little bit of pullback. Uh, most of the shorts get squeezed out during fun buying. Uh, and uh, that generally means there's a little bit of an air pocket and, of course, in really bad markets, bigger air pocket. Uh, we had the Fed president of was Dallas, Dallas yesterday. Uh, today, it was the St. Louis Fed warning everybody that uh, they're going to continue raising interest. They shouldn't uh, people and traders, investors get uh, lulled into sleep thinking. 
that uh, they are not. Um, I don't know. I see a lot of people just at this point saying they jawbone far too much, far too long. Uh, and we'll probably have some kind of surprise in the market soon enough where they do raise and no one believe that they would. <laughs> That's it. Um, let see. Maybe that helps. Probably a good idea there. Yeah, yeah. All the uh, shenanigans at the very beginning of the show. And you, you forget. you got to have a checklist, like if you're a pilot, on a lot of this stuff. And figure out why stuff does and does not work. Uh, anyway, as I said, uh, what do we got? About 30 seconds here left to the break. Um We'll see. Anyway, when we get back, we'll do a little bit of history. We'll go right on into earnings for the day. And uh, you can give me a call if you want. If anybody knows what happened to natural gas in the last uh, 15, 30 minutes, uh, give us a call and give us a full report. We'll be back in a minute. booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. back to see I was trying to see if anything was going on in natural gas here uh, 
This is something. I don't think that this is it. Something about tanks. But, uh, eh, who knows? Okay. Uh, we got uh, emails coming in across the transom already. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of history and then move on. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1993, Apple introduces the first Newton message pad, one of the world's first personal digital assistants. I had one from a competing brand from 3Com. The terms uh, PDA was first used by Apple's CEO, John Scully, in 1992. Why commercial failure, the Newton platform set the bar for future PDA designs and, of course, uh, the application of programs in a handheld device that would later become an iPhone. But perhaps the most important advancement of the Newton offered to technology was the development of the ARM processor. Of course, uh, we hear a great deal about ARMS now with NVIDIA trying to buy it and failing. No one wanted to sell it to them. Um, and now ARMS processors becoming prevalent, at least on the low end of the uh, server market. Uh, Apple uh, invested heavily in the fledgling a uh, architect to power the Newton devices. The ARM architecture has been uh, the foundation of most of the world's mobile devices since that time, including versions of the iPhone, iPad, and uh, the rest. Um, Apple did sell its ownership so it could get some cash to stay in business, selling it for $800 million all those years ago. And, of course, uh, made them through their darkest day until they almost went bankrupt. When in 2002 or three, I can't remember right now, a huge loan from Microsoft kept them in business. Microsoft was uh, deathly afraid of uh, becoming even a bigger pariah uh, for the uh, Federal Trade Commission and antitrust. And uh, we're probably going to see a lot of that in the next coming years. Okay, now with that over. And talking about uh, fun buying pretty much over probably by the close today. We'll see what happens, but it just looks to me like a handful of folks uh, getting squeezed out into the end of the day. Uh, what else do we have? Let's go back through earnings here. Airbnb, this thing was all over the map. Um, after after the uh, close last night, it was down rather significantly. Um, a lot of these stocks have come back from the lows of the day. Uh, this one's got a lot of juice back up. Uh, I don't think it was ever really that bad. I think it was much, may have been down uh, to 100 bucks last night uh, after hours. Can't remember exactly but it looked like it was fairly weak. Um, again, just going up to resistance, and a lot of these stocks had some fairly high short interest in it. And uh, those are stocks that you generally want to stay with because even if you're right, uh, you can start a squeeze like you can get today. And it's gonna. you really want to wait until everybody's kind of given up on the short side. That's generally when these uh, stocks that maybe have weakness actually give it up. Kind of the same kind of... Uh, uh, situation with uh, advanced micro devices. Uh, you would have uh, thought that uh, China uh, was coming to uh, uh, invade them personally uh, after hours last night, but some of the invectives of the short sellers. Uh, again, this one did open up a little bit lower around 94s, back up around 97. Uh, just way too many short sellers. You really had to have a massive loss. Uh, to make the cash on this one. Um, were the things good? No. Were they bad? No. Somewhere in the middle, yes. And, of course, uh, probably the reaction from last night, where I think it got down to 92 bucks. I think I remember seeing it there shortly, was uh, them talking about uh, lowering expectations uh, going in to uh, – at least into the end of the year. Uh, almost all of these companies, uh, NVIDIA, Advanced Micro Devices, Intel, are putting off uh, launching new products until next year. And they're doing that to make sure that they can get rid of inventory this year. 
So is it bad? No. Um, does it mean that we're going to we're off to the races and everybody's looking into next year already? Also, no. But uh, you know, probably the best thing for in uh, AMD uh, is uh, the failure of Intel. Uh, it's just kind of sideways. It came back and retested the low of July twenty nor of twenty uh, ninth. This is uh, Intel, by the way. Um, today and did so on lighter volume. So you may have some kind of low setting up. Resistance though comes in at a uh, on Intel at about 38 bucks. Also out with uh, the news was CVS and apparently you're out uh, buying more things there. Uh, up to 101.44 today. Uh, did break through the high of May 26. That was 98.30 with 5 million shares and you already have 7 million. So you've got a good day and it is holding up higher. Uh, your bookie, uh, otherwise known as DraftKings, uh, had a nice reaction to earnings. Volume could be a little bit better, but uh, of course, uh, price is first and volume second. Uh, but uh, you had 26 million shares yesterday. You got about 16 million shares today. 16.74 on that one. Uh, the South uh, American uh, Mercado Libre, which is kind of a combination of Amazon and Google and everything south, way south, extremely south of the border. Um, Nice pop on this one. It's not going to have huge volume. At least it's through the June 8th high. That's 528,000 shares. You got about 436,000 shares today so far. Uh, and that kind of opens up um, right to resistance, which is at about 900 bucks. You got a double gap there and huge volume down from the May 9th low at. Uh, 1.3 million shares. So probably as good as it gets here. Uh, if I was long this, I'd probably be ringing the register. Uh, looks to me like a trading range is going to set up. Uh, if you're into spreading uh, those diseases no one likes to talk about, like monkeypox, well, you might uh, you might just be on matchgroup.com. And, of course, uh, that's really kind of curtailed action on that uh, site. Uh, as of late uh, and of course a, a huge gap down down to 59.15 today uh, and uh, you know you can always count on uh, the folks at Match Group uh, to get people hooking up uh, even when there's uh, some uh, not so uh, helpful diseases out we'll be back in a minute If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. 
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we've got Todd who asks, uh, why is Apple going higher today? Of course, the end of fund buying. Um, I suspect that uh, since uh, no one got nuked yesterday, everybody thinks uh, that there won't be any problems from China. Uh, but I'm going to book it down to a lot of people getting short yesterday and uh, the end of fund buying. Uh, and uh, we're getting that today. I wouldn't be uh, too excited about Apple here. Uh, you had a huge down day on May 5th with 130 million shares. You're going through that today with 52 million shares. So probably very long in the tooth on that one. Uh, two, two, okay. And what else? See. Okay. Uh, PayPal, another one out with uh, earnings. And as we look at this, uh, nice gap, um, 101. Uh, again, you had a fairly nice low out here uh, that tested it with lighter volume. So it was in the bullish camp. Uh, 71.83 on May 12th got tested with 67.58 on June 30th. Uh, the volume almost 50%. So pretty good signal out here. Now you had uh, two gaps. You may get a third. Uh, why they are not saying it. I have a feeling that a great deal of the pop in PayPal is people coming back to it. Vimo and some of the other uh, applications uh, didn't have tax implications, i.e. they weren't reporting to uh, the feds on what was going on. And people kind of going back to PayPal if uh, if uh, that is uh, not an issue anymore, i.e. you can hide your side hustle underneath uh, Vimo if people will pay you that way. Kind of done. So everybody kind of going back to PayPal a little easier uh, for bookkeeping. Unfortunately, you have to pay the taxes, but uh, eh, that's it. Okay. Uh, t -t -t okay. And what else do we have? Regeneron Pharmaceuticals. Uh, just a test of the previous high. Uh, gave half of it back. Not much going on there. Let's take a look and see at the IBB. Well, it's been going sideways. Uh, did gap higher today. Uh, is that going to break through? You needed about 2 million shares. You got about 2 million shares. Uh, it's not incredibly strong. Uh, if this holds, uh, the, the next stop up is 135.53. That's the April 5th high in the IBB. Yeah, seven bucks. That's what about five percent on that? Da -da. Okay. Um,
Starbucks. And right up to the double gap. That gap goes back to uh, to, to April 4th. Uh, 16 million shares on the gap down. You've got about 8 million shares here. So that probably suggests that it's about as good as it's going to get on this move, too. Eh, I listened to the call. I didn't think it was that bullish. But again, way too many people short going into these uh, earnings stocks and being uh, problematic. Uh, now, in one that's a legitimate breakout, we've got SoFi. Uh, which had the May 20th high, $8.04. 57 million shares back on that May 20th high. Uh, we are through that with 120 million shares, so double the volume. That's uh, pretty good. As long as you can hold 804, that's good. But again, one of the reasons why we've been talking about uh, this week about being rather stupid to be short stocks that are cheap uh, because it makes it so easy for them to go clean your clock. Let's see what else we have here. Okay, we looked at the IBB. Question about the TLT. Well, we talked about the the bonds and all the money coming into it. Uh, we also talked yesterday about kind of having a bearish engulfing on the candle yesterday in the TLT. It's not really pulling that much back. Um, you did have a very good uh, test, though, of the high, and that was the May 27th high at 119.07 uh, with 26 million shares into it with a high of 18 million shares over those last two days. So, yeah, I think you're – going to probably start working your way back down to this low in the gap uh, from July 8th. That gets you back into about 113. Uh, question about Micron, which came right up here. Uh, ta -ta -ta. Question about Micron. Ta -ta. Well, eh, I'm going to say, see, I have Micron expire on 819. Well, I think you got enough time. My guess, though, is the next couple of days are going to be kind of tough on it. Uh, as I said, uh, into fund buying, normally you get a half percent in the market. Um, retrace even in a bull market. Um, you chase all the shorts out uh, fairly easily. I dislike that it has fairly light volume on a day where a lot of short squeezes are happening. So either it's happened already or... It's not going to happen. Uh, real tough resistance at about 65. So, you know, if I don't know where you bought them, where you went, but this would be one where I would say that I'd probably want to get out until I get uh, until this thing bases out around 63. Could it go higher? Yeah. I'm going to say more than likely it will move around between 63 and 65, though, for at least a handful of days. Okay, and what else do we have here today? Got about a minute and a half for this segment. And see. Okay, question on CCJ. Uh, with them restarting uh, the nuclear reactors in Germany, uh, should I make out anything of this thing coming back? No, I think it's the whole energy sector, uh, which is problematic. Crude oil, of course, down three bucks. So many of these folks have a basket of all these stocks uh, so that when any energy stock uh, or when the uh, sector kind of goes down, it really, it's very tough to see a great deal more than uh, the rest go down with it. So I wouldn't make a great deal of, uh, a deal about it. Um, you don't have a lot of volume out here. And really, you're right in the half of this big candle that went back up. Um, ideally, though, you'd want about 23.75 to jump in Kamiko. On the, you know, if the volume remains light, you get a little bit of pullback. Really, anything under 24 uh, could be fairly good. I suspect it's going to do a lot better in the in the uh, fall as people get cold uh, with the uh, Ruskies shutting off the natural gas to Germany. Uh, German Prime Minister told everybody today, start cutting wood. 
But I think that tells you about everything you need to know. We'll be back in a bit. TFNN has been your trusted source of analysis for bonds, metals, stocks, commodities, and options for years. And we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the Forex market. Teddy Kekstad has 30 plus years of experience in Forex trading, commodity risk management, Forex hedging, volatility, and so much more. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with elite coverage of all major currency pairs, including the DXY, Euro Dollar, Pound Dollar, Aussie Dollar. Dollar, dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, and so much more. Teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted. For the month of July, inaugural members to the Tiger Forex Report will receive 25% off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed. Just use promo code TEDDY25 to lock in the added savings. This offer is good only for the month of July, so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. TFNN, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. We're going to go to Alan in California. How are you doing today, Alan? Hello? Okay. I don't know what he was doing around here with his penny stock, but uh, I don't see a whole lot in it. Okay. Uh, another... Uh, Another question about what's going on with Camping World from Todd. Uh, where is this stock going? Okay. Um, probably the best news you could have was uh, lower crude prices for Camping World. Uh, you know, anything that burns gas now, problematic. You're getting some bounces in them. But uh, planes and uh, boats and uh, RVs, uh, problematic. Uh, you need about 4 million shares. You're probably not going to get it today. Uh, I would have been out this thing on the pop today. Uh, again, eh, hard to tell what's going on with crude today but uh, or uh, natural gas, but uh, they're all moving fairly succinctly. But, uh, yeah, that's it. 
Uh, okay. Um, okay. Let's go back to this. Oh, we were. Uh, did I talk about Microsoft? I think I was going to get to that. Uh, Microsoft um, back up. Uh, not bad, but volume really poor today. 14.2 million shares. Uh, could you still get back up to 285? Yeah, uh, that's where real significant resistance is. Uh, setting up, I suspect, a better um, trading range from probably you know, about 255 up to 285-ish. Uh, setting up here now. Okay. The S&P up 66, Dow up 430, NASDAQ up 230, and the Russell uh, up 28. Okay. We'll go back to it. Did I get everything else? I think I did. Uh, to, to NFLX for John. We get anything going here? Eh. You know, I have to say that... Uh, uh, I haven't been watching a lot of TV. Uh, I do get a lot of ads for Beavis and Butthead. I watched their uh, Paramount uh, movie special uh, that was out, uh, Beavis and Butthead Do the Universe. Um, you know those two young gentlemen? I smell Oscar. Uh, anyway, <laughs> they've got the, the series coming back tomorrow night, not on Netflix, it's on Paramount. But uh, as I said, I don't think that there's a lot. The, the biggest problem I would say for Netflix is whether they end up losing a lot more subscribers uh, just because they have one uh, very heavily watched TV show, uh, one accounting for 50% of all viewership, and that uh, had its uh, season uh, uh, end here, what, a week ago. Um, I don't know if they've got something really big that's going to drag more people in or keep it. Uh, but generally, when you get to half of everybody watching one show, it means that they're probably not watching that much of the other half. I always uh, looked at the ups and downs of HBO when uh, The Sopranos went off the uh, air and uh, a few other times. A lot of dips and dabs, uh, depending on how good your contract is. Uh uh, just 1883 on Paramount. Loved it. Okay. That's it. <laughs> okay. Uh, I still haven't gotten any answers about why Boyle took off to the races uh, today um, about 2 o'clock. Um, and giving about half of it back. I didn't get a chance to dig through it before the show, but a lot of times this has to do with uh, futures expiration and or just uh, the old uh, short squeeze. But, man, that was a nice little pop there. Uh, volume, okay, but not that exciting. Uh, 2.2, uh, yeah, 2.2 million shares on the first, and you got about 2.8. But, you know, you just went into this gap, and you're really finding that resistance does come right in at that 84 uh, which is the gap up on the 22nd of July. Uh, that had 2.2 million shares, so that is part of it. And then you've got this gap down, happened on 2.6. So not an easy chart to read out here. But uh, again, we're getting very close to finding the lows uh, seasonality-wise in natural gas, and that's kind of the last two weeks of August, so that'll be it. 1883, what's that about? I haven't seen that. Uh, terminal list. I haven't got into that. I don't know why. Maybe because I I, I saw five minutes of uh, Jurassic Park, and now I'm off that actor. Ugh. Okay. Da, 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 da. What do we have? Okay. Question on IBM. Did we get back to it? Oh, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I hadn't thought about that. Uh, 1883, that's the prequel to Yellowstone, the the uh, big uh, draw on the Paramount Network. Um, and that doesn't stream, I don't think. 
does it? Um, Yellowstone? But, uh, yeah. Uh, International Business Machine still has that high volume low out at 125, so you need to get back in there and test it. Uh, they need a prequel to Fletch. <laughs> okay. I wonder if you, do you have to watch the prequel if you haven't watched the regular show? I don't know about that. Okay. Anything else? We did that one, did that one. Uh, okay. Question on uh, gold. We talked about how it would be nice for gold to have a little bit of a pullback into this gap. Uh, very light volume today. Um, yeah, I don't know if you're going to get any more, but uh, ideally 162-ish would be awful sweet in the GLD, not saying you're going to get it. Uh, you gapped up. You really didn't have a ton of volume, but it was okay. Uh, you had 7.5 million shares on the 29th, and you're down on about half that today, um, and you pulled back a little bit on it. Um, yeah, depending on how much risk you want to take, and how short of a trade you're looking for in gold? Well, you got Thursday tomorrow. Ideally, I'd love to see this thing pull back on very light volume into Friday's close and keep under like maybe 163 with no volume. And that might set up a, 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 a the continuation or move on. Uh, ideally, 162 would set up a, a nice ABC to the upside. Um, so, uh, yeah. I'm waiting for a pullback. Uh, okay, question on Tesla. How high can it go? Uh, well, I think you're running out of juice right about here. Huge down day on April 26th with 45 million shares. You're really kind of up to it with uh, 21 million shares today. We'll be back in a minute. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. 
TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And as we uh, wrap up today's show and wrap up the end of fun buying with a lot of short sellers out there uh, in the market uh, probably uh, being the first to blink on this. And I notice I've gotten a bunch of uh, email from the usual suspects who tell me that the end of the world has been uh, coming for the last three or four days. And generally those guys run out of money. I noticed the, the ones that Verissa's Voraciously, voraciously, uh, email me all day long about the uh, coming end of the world and why they are short 10,000, 100,000, uh, 2 million shares or something. It's always, uh, always interesting. Uh, I just always wonder whether these folks have money when they finally get uh, to the market pulling back. Um, market's going up about three-fourths of the time, even in a bear market, and I don't think anything has changed my mind that we're probably still in a fairly bearish market. Uh, just got too short, got a lot of people moving higher, and uh, we're probably going to see some distribution, I suspect. But uh, anyway, keep an eye on it. If the market starts moving down, probably good, pretty good confirmation that a lot of this uh, was fuel uh, from uh, fun buying and uh, running a great deal of shorts. Now on eBay, after the bell, we had uh, who? Who? Asking about this. Who was that? Uh, accidentally deleted it. Sorry about that. Uh, about uh, eBay after the bell. I don't know. These. I don't know anybody using eBay anymore. It's a uh, direct conduit to mostly Chinese uh, stuff. I don't see anybody really advertising. It's either Craigslist or a variety of other things that they're actually selling. You know, maybe I'm way off on this, but it, I I don't think they're probably going to, I mean, just looking at the chart, I'm not expecting a whole lot of either way. Uh, a lot of resistance, just slightly higher. So when you can, not when you have to, and we will see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems